Hello, welcome to this episode about formulas and functions in Excel. The video is meant for absolute beginners, someone who's starting to learn formulas and functions in Excel. Before we start formulas and functions, let me show you on how you can do simple calculations on a spreadsheet. Let's say you want to add two numbers, put equal sign in one of the cells, then you type the numbers directly from the keyboard. Let's say you want to add 9 and a 5, you press enter. In case you want to make the changes to the numbers, click on the answer. Then from the formula bar, you are able to adjust the number. Let me make that one a 9. You can also change the operator. Maybe you want to make that one a multiplication. One point I want you to note is that in a spreadsheet, a formula must start with an equal sign. What will happen if I remove this equal sign? Excel will not detect that one as a formula. So that's the point to note. N formula or N function that you type in a spreadsheet, you must start always with an equal sign. Apart from typing numbers direct from the keyboard, how can you do your calculations based on the numbers that you already have? Let's say that I have these two numbers. I'm not typing them from the keyboard and I want to add them. I know I can do equal sign 10 plus 20. But in this method, I could prefer use what called cell reference. So what is cell reference? Instead of typing the numbers, you refer to that cell that where the number is stored. Put equal sign, click on that cell. You realize that Excel is not showing me 20, but it shows me the name of the cell as D what 18. If I want to add them, I click on addition sign and then I click on the next cell, D what 19. So my formula reads equal sign D18 plus D19. What it means, take the content of cell D18, add it to the content of cell D what 19. You press enter. In case I want to make change to my numbers, it will, uh, it will automatically update my answer. Let me make this one 40. I can make this one a 70. And you see my answer is automatically updating this cell. But what I want you to notice that in this cell, you can only type numbers. What will happen if I put a text? Excel will not be able to add a text to what a number. You see you get error in, in that answer. So in the future, in my upcoming videos, I'll be making a video on the common errors that you are likely to get when using a spreadsheet. Don't forget to subscribe so that you can be notified when I make that video. Let me change this one to a number. Let me make that one even five, press enter. The next thing that you can do, you can type the name of the cells direct from the keyboard instead of clicking on them. But for me, I find clicking much easier than typing. Put equal sign, then instead of me clicking on this cell like this, what I'll do, I'll just type the name of that cell from the keyboard as D18. Then I put my operator, if I want to subtract the two, the two cells, I put D19, then press enter. Then the last thing I want to, the last thing I want to point out in this video, Excel is not case sensitive. You can type the cell names in lowercase and still get the correct answer. For example, equal sign D18. You see, I've typed the D in small uh, in small letter. Then I need to multiply by D19. Then I press enter. I'm able to get the correct answer because a spreadsheet or Excel is not case sensitive. In this demonstration, I'm using data from a stationery to explain formulas and functions. I have my stationery items here days of the week. This is where I'll be typing the column headings of what I'll be calculating. Then I have the actual data here. If you want to do with me, post a video, type the data, and then we start. Hoping that you are done typing, the first thing I want us to learn is how to get totals. Totals can be done both horizontally and vertically. Let's say you want to get the totals of a particular item for the entire week. Example, the totals of books from Monday to Friday, you get your totals this way horizontal. If you want to get the totals of all the items for a particular day, let's say Monday, you get your totals this way. There are a number of ways of doing the totals. I'll show like two or three ways. One way is to add each individual cells. Example, put your equal sign there, then click on this cell. This is what we learned from the previous example. You click on the addition sign from the keyboard, click on that cell, addition, you click on that cell, and then you press enter. 
So you realize that I was skipping a few cells in between. In case I want to make adjustment to my formula, I click on this cell. Then from the formula bar, I can include the days that I skipped. I skipped Thursday, so I can click on add and then Thursday. Then you press enter. This method of adding individual cells to get their totals is not the best way. Let's take a scenario that you have a worksheet that has like 100 columns and 100 rows that you need to add. That means you'll be adding 100 different cells. Let me demonstrate. Assume that this list was continuous, I continue adding. You note that it will take me some time to add these individual cells separate. At the same time, the size of the formula is getting longer. So which alternative do you have? The alternative you have is to use a function and that function is called sum. Like any other formula or function, sum must start with an equal sign. So put your equal sign in that cell, in this cell Z3. Then you type the function sum. The moment you start typing, all the functions or the formulas that start with sum will pop up. So double click on the first one, then you see it reads equal sign, sum, and then bracket. So what are you putting in that bracket? You are putting what called the range. And this range is the cells that you are summing up without skipping n cell in between. So my range is from B3 up to F3. You see my formula is now shorter. It shows the starting cell and the ending cell, that's B3 up to F3. This method, I'm not skipping n cell in between. I close my bracket and then I press enter. What if I wanted to skip some cells in between? What I can do, I'll separate my cells by what you call a comma. But this one takes us back to the formula that we learned, which might make your formula look a bit longer. Put a comma, put a comma. Let's say you wanted to skip that cell, you didn't want to include it, then press enter. So that's what you can achieve by using of what called sum. There's other ways of using the function sum. That's not the only way. You can also start by summing up, by selecting, not summing up, by selecting. You select from Monday to Friday, then you click on auto sum, then select sum. That's another way. The last way you can do sum is to use this uh, command here called insert function. Once you click on that command, this dialog box that pops up, you might get some in the most recent used functions like what I have here. But if you can't see it, you can search for some. Then you click on this button go. Alternatively, you can use what called this drop down arrow and then use the category uh, because these formulas are uh, these functions and formulas have been categorized. I think some belong to math and trigonometry. You click on that. Then you scroll down. You can see my sum here. You click on it and then you click OK. Once you have done that, now you give your range. You can select the range from the keyboard or you can type it. Let me say I want to type it B3. And then remember that the range is always separated by a colon. Then F3. Then you press enter. I get the same totals. The last bit I want to show you. I click on this insert function, but there's a number of ways that I can launch it. I can click on formula, then insert function. I get the same dialog box. Or from the home tab, I can click on this uh, auto sum function and then more functions. I land at the same. Uh, at the same the next function I want us to learn is to get the highest number within a particular range Let's say you want to know the highest number of books that you sold from Monday to Friday in that scenario Use a function by the name max like sum put equal sign then type max The moment you start typing the formula will pop up double click on it Then select your range from Monday to Friday. That's from cell b3 up to cell f3 
then close your bracket, press enter. So I'm getting 80 because from Monday to Friday, 80 is my highest, highest word value. You might also want to know the minimum value or the minimum number of books that we sold for that week. You type min, put equal sign, mean function, double click on it, then put your range between cell B3 up to F3, close the bracket, press enter from the keyboard. The next function is called average. You may want to know averagely how many books were you selling per day. Put equal sign, just like the other function that we have learned, you put average, then select the range from cell B3 up to F3, then close your bracket, and then you press enter at the same dialog box. We come to the end of this first episode of functions. Let me show you like two more functions that you can use to improve your skills. The first function is called count. What does count function do? Count function is used to count the number of cells that contain a numeric value within a specified range. For example, from cell B3 to cell F3, you realize that I have three cells, that's Monday, Thursday, and Friday that contain at least a numeric value. Let's see if we are getting the same by using count. Equal sign, count, you click on that function, select your range from cell B3 to F3, close the bracket, then you press enter. Yes, I'm getting a three. What if I put a value on, on Wednesday? Put 60. You see my count has increased to four. The next function is count blank, just the way it sounds. Count blank is used to count the number of blank cells within a specified range. From this cell B3 to F3, you realize that I have one blank cell that's on Tuesday. Will I get the same by using the count? Let's see. Equal sign, count. You see the moment I start typing count, all the functions that start with count will pop up. I select count blank. Then select my range from Monday to Friday, that cell from cell B3 to F3. Close the bracket, then you press enter. Yes, I'm getting, I'm getting one cell. The last function I'll discuss today is called count A. What does count A function do? Count A function is used to count the number of cells that con contain either a text, a number, or a symbol within a specified range. Let's see if I put count, all the functions that start with count will pop up. I select count A, put my range from cell B3 to F3, close the bracket, then you press enter. You realize I get the same answer as what I got when I used count. But what if I put a text here? Let's say I put letter E. What you note, my count A has increased to five because I have one additional cell that contain letter what? E. But count blank has reduced to zero because there's no cell within that range that is blank. What you realize I've been using this function for one item, that's books. If I want to apply the, the same function to these other items that are remaining, I don't have to repeat the whole procedure of doing the functions from scratch. What I do, Excel provides you with what called autofill. If you put your cursor in a cell that contains a formula, point your mouse pointer at this corner. When your cursor changes to a plus sign, you can drag it down. And the same formula or the same function is applied to the rest of the remaining cells. If I want to do it for multiple columns, I can select a cross, then I drag it from the last cell, which makes my work much easier and makes Excel one of the most powerful tools for getting calculation. Coming video, I'll be differentiating between sum and sum if. You realize that when I type sum, there's this function that called sum if that pops up. I'll differentiate or I'll explain when to use sum and when to use sum if. The same way, I'll also differentiate between count and count if. And then lastly, I'll discuss about if function because if is a very common function and a logic function that you are likely to, uh, to be using from day to day when working with the spreadsheet.
In the upcoming episode, I'll discuss these functions. Don't forget to subscribe so that you can be notified when the video is coming out. See you.